The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, the Jews took up stones to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these do you stone me? The Jews answered him, We stone you for no good work, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be nullified, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Again, they tried to arrest him, but he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had first baptized, and there he remained. And many came to him, and they said, John did no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true. And many believed in him there. The Gospel of the Lord. The argument that Jesus uses here is that the Word of God, the Scriptures, address the people who hear Scripture as gods. The Lord says in the Old Testament, I have said to you, you are are gods and sons of the Most High. So Jesus' argument is, if people who hear the Scriptures are called gods, because by hearing the Word of God, they are divinized, they are given God's divine life. Then he himself, since he says he is the Son of God, although in John's Gospel he nowhere actually says that, this is what they accuse him of, his works testify that he is indeed the Son of God. This is an interesting thing for us, because the Word of God, therefore, hearing the Word of God, reading it, makes us gods, with a small g. We have God's divine life coming to us. This is an important thing. Because the scriptures have this power, the word of God, God's revelation, God's truth, God's revelation of himself has this ability to do this to us, has this effect. Therefore, it is no surprise then that Gospel says here, put the Bible in a prominent place in your family house. Let everyone read it, even the little children. We should be familiar with the the scriptures. We should be familiar with the Bible. Do you know what books are in the Bible? Do you know what order they're in, roughly? Do you know what's happening if someone says, picks at random a book and says, okay, the prophet Nahum, do you know what's in Nahum? Or Obadiah, if someone says to you, Obadiah, do you know why you should be excited? Do you not? No, you don't know. Okay, but you should. We should. You should be excited because Obadiah is the shortest of the prophets, okay? You can read it immediately in a couple of minutes. That's why you should be excited. But the Word of God has this power over us, to us. You know, many priests from Kerala, they all seem to be charismatics. And I've seen them, by reading the gospel over the sick, cure them. The Holy Spirit cures the sick by them listening to the Word of God. It has this power. This is why also during Mass, now after the scriptures and the homily, We have silence, just like we have silence after communion. Why? Because at both points we are receiving the word of God. We need time to digest the word of God. We also need to be in a deserted place. Jesus goes away, slips across the Jordan, and many came to him and believed in him here in this deserted place. We need silence for this. Now, on a practical note, because... As soon as I start preaching about the Word of God and how we should all have Bibles, immediately I'll get a hundred emails asking which Bible. Okay, now that I'm older, I am less fussy. If you struggle to read the Bible, now I'm speaking about English translations, a very readable version is the Good News version. For many years it had a bad reputation. People said it was a, a paraphrase rather than a translation. But really it's very readable. Good News Bible, Catholic edition 
with the so-called so apocrypha slash deuterocanonicals. Very readable and um, excellent. Actually, I think it's excellent. And it has nice drawings in it, okay? Then, if you want something slightly more highbrow, something more accurate, our lectionaries, this one is the Revised Standard Version. In America, they use the New American Bible, second edition, I think. In England and Ireland, they use the Jerusalem Bible. But soon, all over the world, uh, the English Standard Version will be used, ESV. It's already been authorized. It was made by American Protestants and authorized by Indian bishops in the Middle East. But this one, it looks like, is going to be universal. Every English-speaking country will use the ESV. So you can look up the English Standard Version. That's also, it's, it's published all over the place in America and in Britain now. But remember, the, whatever it is, get a Bible that you can use and read. Keep it with you. Read it every day. Read especially the Gospels. Let it be familiar to you. Let it transform you as well. Be open to it in this sense that you're not just reading it like you might read the newspaper or an instruction manual or things like that, but that this is God communicating with us, person to person, soul to soul. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.